My name is Matthew Keyes and my role here is the Swimming Sports Coordinator. It's essentially a friendly competition. We've got people who have been part of the Deaf Olympics, but essentially it's a friendly competition. Uh, they do certainly are here to represent their state, but essentially the Australian Deaf Games is all about having fun playing sport and bringing everyone together. It just has a huge impact to being in the outside mainstream world. Being part of the Australian Deaf Games just inspires me and makes me feel amazed at the ease in which we all have. We meet friends new and old and it's just brilliant. It's such a worthy event. great to showcase us as a community here coming together what we can do with our sports. For me, I think number one is the swimming. I don't care about the other sports, swimming is my go-to. There's plenty of sports and certainly they're great to watch but yeah, I'm all about the swimming. My name is Anthony, but most people call me Why Not? Haha, <laughs> Tony spelled backwards. But Anthony Gorringe, and uh, I am from Orange. So people call me Tony Gorringe from Orange. <laughs> <laughs> For Deaf Bowls New South Wales, I've been there for 38 years before I resigned two years ago. And here for the Australian Deaf Games, or the Australian Deaf Bowls, 28 years, and I'll be retiring in two days' time. How does retirement look? What will you do with your time? I'll play bowls again instead of organising it. <laughs> So we're here at Charlestown. This is a sign for Charlestown. We're at the uh, bowling club and we've got some lawn bowls happening here. We've got 48 players with us today. Woo. My name's Michael Barker and I'm the president of the Australian Deaf Lawn Bowls Association and also the Secretary of the International Deaf Bowls Federation. In his 30s, he had an operation. It was successful and a few days later he got an infection and just killed out all of his hearing. I, I had four operations on one ear, they all failed. I had one operation the other that worked, but then an infection hit it and killed that ear. And that's just a general trend you hear from people, whether they get sick when they're very young and lose their hearing, or as in my case, it's just bad luck. When they say 98% success rate in operations, there's always 2% that fail. And a lot of people in the deaf community are the 2% that fail.
He's lucky because he's been in the hearing world and become deaf, so he's a good organiser. He's learned Auslan and yeah, he's good because he can communicate with both sides, you know, the hearing and the non-hearing. Because we don't have a volume control, we don't know how loud we're speaking. So people think we're angry. But in actual fact, we're guessing at what our volume is when we speak. Deaf people, because of their signing um, and inability to communicate in the hearing world, means they are so disadvantaged within the general public. Um, and you often find that because of that, well, they don't have sort of like high potential for themselves. They think that menial tasks, is, I'm good at that, so I'll do it. People leave me alone, I can do my work and go home. And really, it's something which the hearing world has to start thinking about is, oh, you know, they do have skills, they have you know, a need to include them in lots of areas. Get out there and learn some Auslan so you can come and have a chat with us and we can play some bowls.